Tomorrow night on this very program, the legendary, the lovable Bonnie Hunt. As a leader of the contemporary self-help movement, John Bradshaw has helped many people better understand themselves, their relationships, and their families. His newest book is entitled Family Secrets, What You Don't Know Can Hurt You. We're very happy to welcome the very popular John to our program this evening. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Tom. What kinds of uh, family secrets are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about all kinds. Some secrets are good, like the guy just said to you when you asked him what he was going to do in New York. He said... I'm it's not going to tell you. That's, that's private, a secret. Right. That's yeah. private. Yeah. So families need to have secrets. And uh, there are good secrets, and they help families function well, like mom and dad need to have a life apart from the kids. Right. The kids need to have secrets apart from mom and dad. I mean, I'll talk to my son and daughter, and, and I, every once in a while I'll see them look over at each other, and there's something they know that I don't know. Right. Uh, fun secrets, you know, families have little funny names for things. I counseled a guy one day, and he talked about his Billy Ray Dill for 30 minutes. Billy Ray Dill. On the program. Yeah. I mean, uh, in the counseling session, yeah. I finally got that he was referring to his genitals. And really? Yeah, that's what he <laughs> called his genitals. B Billy Ray Dill. His Billy Ray Dill. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I said, well, <laughs> well tell me about it's like, it's like, like your Jim Bob Bill, Billy. Yeah, yeah. I said, tell How's me Jim about Bob George? Yeah. About how, where does this come from? He said, well, my mom used to say, go like your brother Billy Ray and your cousin Dill when she was trying to get him to go to the bathroom. Uh huh. So these are funny little family secrets. Yep. Now, it's good. To, to let your spouse know about this kind of stuff. Yeah, by like, the way, honey, there's this little thing. We ought to have this ceremony yeah. where you're standing on the altar and you go, these are my tatas and these are my go-go's. And, and, and let, the, <laughs> <laughs> let them know what you got. But keep your hands off my Billy Ray Dill. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Now, families have surprise secrets. Yep. You're going to give dad a present and you keep it secret. So those are good secrets. And, and then one other kind of secret is sort of just my own dreams and ambitions. And even between a husband and a wife or a couple who've been together a while, that's a good thing to have is some real private places in your own psyche that belong to you. Okay, but what about things that shouldn't be kept secret? What about things that occur in families that they might rather not talk about that maybe they ought to address? Well, things like grandpa's dying. Yeah, okay. Okay, and, and uh, like I interviewed people for this book where it, as children, everyone knew that the grandfather was dying but them. Now, you know, in, in all honesty, people felt, a lot of times people feel, well, the child would be better off not knowing. But in this particular case, this guy felt like everybody got to say goodbye to grandpa but me. You know, it's sort of like everybody knew he was dying. I was the only one that was not in on that secret. Mm -hmm. See, and secrets have a power to them. It's like the bomber. He's the only one that purportedly knows. Right, And right. there's enormous power in that. Knowledge, sure, sure. And, and so secrets have a power uh, that gives the secret bearer a sense of power. Also isolates isolates the secret bearer. Let me ask you something here. You, you know, you talk about families uh, maintaining privacy, keeping secrets, you know, uh, sharing uh, secrets in a, in, in a humorous way. What about these people that go on these afternoon television programs, John, and bear their very souls? I mean, uh, it's a parade of incest, it's a parade of flagellation, it's a parade of abuse. I mean, is this helpful for a family to have this, 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 this public revelation of, of, of their innermost failings and their innermost faults? No, I think this is a clear violation of private. It's one of the reasons I wrote this book, that I felt like that we've just sort of gone bonkers yeah. in terms of confession. And, and that while 100 years ago, maybe there was a lot of incest and no one talked about it, in a sense, we've, we've gone to the other extreme. And there's almost like a voyeuristic re-victimization of people yeah. on these programs now. And I don't think it's healthy at all. I don't see that it's a healthy thing or a healthy trend, and it creates an appetite for that. What if there is a secret in a family that involves a parent abusing uh, a sibling, a brother, or a sister? either sexually, physically, verbally. Are these secrets that should be kept or should they be brought out in the open? Well, I made a chart. I, I don't know whether this is right. I just tried to establish some guidelines. Okay. And I have what I call lethal secrets. And those would be things like incest and battering. And, you know, in the, in the Simpson case, uh, we know that the family knew 
there was physical abuse going on. Right. And, and if he is convicted, you could say that maybe if that secret had been told much earlier on. It never would have happened. It never would if have happened. If he had noticed the 800-pound gorilla walking through the house. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, so those secrets, you know, we, we know battering, criminality, uh, violence, those need to be told. I think addiction secrets need to be told because they're, they're killing the person who's truly an addict. Right. Not that if grandma's a little bit into the cooking, Sherry. I mean, you, no, yeah, no. no. We're, see, an addiction to me has life-damaging consequences. I know people that work a lot. People say, well, you're a work addict. No, they, en they enhance their life with their work. They like their work. It isn't causing life-damaging consequences. I think people have a right to know about birth and paternity. At least you ought to have the opportunity to know. Now, when you get into in vitro fertilization and you could have yeah. five parents... That begins to get real. Well, you know, we had a woman and a man here last night, a couple, uh, and apparently some of her eggs were given to another person, and they had children, and they, uh, these two have their own kids, and they're going to tell them the whole story. And I wondered last night when they were here, why bother children with that? Yeah. You, you know, yeah. they, they, their parents love them. They know that, and maybe that's sufficient. Okay. Well, I, I talk about age appropriateness, that there are... Uh, I had a therapist one time tell me, go home and tell all the secrets because families are as sick as their secrets. See, that's an extreme that we've got to really be careful about. Uh, age appropriate. It may be that there's some point where that's a valuable thing to share. It, it may not be. Uh, I have a thing I call third degree secrets where you have to look at the context, who would it hurt, uh, guidelines like go slowly with this, don't go dump things. Okay and really be sure that you know what you're doing. Uh, I, you know, I, again, this is an area where not a lot has been written about it. So I, I, don't, I don't profess this book to be the last word on it, of but at least not. Of course not. These it's, are it's a beginning. Families have been uh, trying to deal with these situations from time immemorial, and the, the families come with no written instructions, Absolutely. and they do the best they can. Absolutely. We are with Mr. John Bradshaw. His newest book is called Family Secrets, What You Don't Know Can Hurt You. We'll have you join us on the toll free up and running now at 800-952-2788. Back after these messages.